Who wants to learn about the Drobo? Step right up. You want to see what the Drobo does? We'll give you a little demo here. Talk about it. So the Drobo is a four bay storage array that gives you expansion capability, data protection. What we do is we protect against single drive failure. So you want to start off with a minimum of two drives in here. We, we, we saw the box. We allow you to go out and buy any standard SATA drive. There's nothing proprietary about these drives. So if you prefer Seagate, Western Digital, Hitachi, Mac Store, doesn't matter. Um, if you're familiar with RAID technology, all RAID is is a way to combine multiple hard drives to get data redundancy. What we did was we looked at RAID technology and said, how can we make it better? Because there are limitations to RAID. One of them being, RAID doesn't like you to mix drive capacities. It likes all the drives to be the same size. Sometimes that isn't practical. What we allow you to do is start off with, let's say, 500 gig drives if they're the best deal. They're selling for about $89 today. When you need more capacity two months down the road, the 750s might be $89 or the one terabytes might be $89. So you can actually grow your total storage array with different size drives. So you can see I'm mixing 320, 200, and 250s in here. This video actually on the uh, left here is streaming off of the Drobo right now. Colored lights on the side and blue lights on the bottom. Now the bottom is capacity. So this is telling me that right now the Drobo is about 40% full. So there's 10 lights down here. As I put more data on there, the lights continue to light up. When I hit 85%, the Drobo is going to start warning me that it's getting full. It doesn't mean it's going to stop accepting data, but what it means is it wants me to go out and buy another drive. So if I ignore that and I wait till 95% of capacity, I'll get another light. So if you look on the inside of the cover, this cover is actually held on magnetically. This is our owner's manual right here. All right. If you can drive a car and you know what traffic lights are, you can drive a Drobo. It's very easy. Green means we've got a healthy system here. Everything's good. We go to an amber light here. It means either we're at 85% of capacity, or if it's flashing, it means don't pull the drives out because I'm busy doing something. We get a red light. It means we're at 95% of capacity, and we really need to go out and buy another drive. If it's flashing, it means the drive has failed. So let's pretend a drive fails. All right, let's pull the drive out of here. Let's pull this 200 gig. All right, so I'm working along in Aperture or Photoshop or whatever on my files, and a drive fails. Well, you can see that that video that's streaming is still streaming, even though I just yanked the drive out of here. But the Drobo, you can see I went from, I was at about, what, 40% capacity? I just lost 200 gigs. So my lights are now up to about 70%, okay? What happens if another drive fails? Yes, question. Wait, if you put that drive back in, does it clear it? Yes. Okay. Yes. It will reformat the drive. Okay. What, Correct. What you, so you have to just throw it away and get some new drive? Well, if this failed, yeah. I would send it back to Seagate because it's probably still under warranty. But in the meantime, I'd probably run over to Circuit City or Best Buy and buy another drive. Okay. And then the, when I got this back, it would become a spare or I could pop it back in there. Good question. Um, if I had four drives in here, let's say I put four 500s in here and the Drobo warns me that it's getting full, I could pull out one of the 500s and put in a 750 or put in a one terabyte, put in a larger drive so I could migrate. And that information from the 500 is saved. Well, basically, the three drives that were left in there would write data over to the new drive. So that one that you pulled out is now fresh drive, nothing wrong with it, but you have cleared it out. You could use it yeah, elsewhere. Drobo, exactly. Okay. Buy another Drobo. I'm all for it. Or what some people do is they'll go out and buy a cheap external drive case for 30 bucks, then they'll throw the 500 gig in there, and that can become a travel drive or an archive drive or uh, something like that. So... Um, but what I was going to do is I was going to fail another drive to show you, depending on how much data is on the Drobo, I can actually suffer multiple drive failure because there's really not much on here. But you can see that video is still streaming, but I am getting a warning here. 
So I'm getting a flashing light, which is telling me don't pull that drive out because that's where my data is. And I'm also getting a solid red light, which is saying put a drive in here, please, as soon as you can. Because I want to go back into a green mode, and we need at least two drives. So we run over to Walgreens or wherever you can buy SATA drives, and we pop it in. Unlike a standard RAID system, the drives aren't numbered. It doesn't care where you put the drive. It's telling me here just because that's a top slot. But we pop it in, and you'll see a couple things happen. It'll recognize the drive. It'll format the drive. You'll see my capacity gauge come back down because I just added more capacity. And then you'll see the lights flashing because it's going to do a rebuild. It's going to copy the data from this drive onto this drive so I can go back into a redundant mode. So the whole idea here is you've got multiple drives in here. We're writing across all the drives to make your data redundant so that if a single drive fails, you don't lose any data. Question on redundancy. Can you write the same file to two drives? No. The Drobo basically takes care of all of that for you. You see the Drobo as one volume. So if you look on the desktop here, you see Drobo. Whether I have two drives, three drives, or four drives in the Drobo, it's still one volume. The way it's doing the data protection is all built into the Drobo itself. That's all hardware based. I mean, there would be. So you can see it's in the middle of doing a rebuild now. Well, I'm impatient. I don't like waiting for stuff. So I'm actually going to put another drive in there in the middle of the rebuild. You would not do that with a RAID system. With a standard RAID system, you have to let it finish doing the rebuild before you do anything. But we're going to pop this in, and what will happen is it'll do the same thing. It'll recognize it, format it. You see the capacity gauge come down even more because I just added another 320 gigs. That video is still streaming even while all that's going on. So the, the reason I'm pointing that out to you is while you're working, there's no degradation in access time or speed even while the rebuilds are going on. So you can keep doing whatever it is you're doing even while the rebuilds and it's done now. So we're back in a safe mode. You can see I dropped down to about 30% capacity and we're on our way until we fill up the rest of the drives. Uh, it's not a very big file. Yeah, this is this is like uh, 720 megs. Yeah, it's not. It's going to take a little longer. I mean, we use a small file just for the demo. What's the maximum capacity in the drive? Right now, the largest drive you can buy is a 1.5 terabyte. Uh, Seagate released that about a week ago. We've tested them; they work fine in here. As larger hard drives come out, when the two terabytes come out or the three terabytes come out, as long as it's a three and a half inch SATA drive, it'll work inside the Drobo. So it's really unlimited in terms of capacity. The box itself sells for $4.99 without any drives in it. And then we also have some bundles already set up with drives in them. The two terabyte bundle, which is two one terabyte drives, is $7.99. And the four terabyte bundle, four one terabyte drives, is $1,099. $499 is ready to go besides drives. You just need four drives. 500 for the box. And 500 for the box. Everything but the drives. Correct. Right. This piece here is called Drobo Share. It's a network adapter. Okay. So the Drobo itself is direct attached to a workstation through either Firewire or USB. 800, 400? Uh, 800. Firewire 800 or USB 2. If you want to run this off a network, you can add Drobo Share, which gives you a gigabit Ethernet connection, okay. and then you can share the Drobo amongst Is it a group of computers. Can you trunk it? In order to network, you have to have the Drobo Share? No. There's other ways to do it. Uh, Apple Airport Extreme has a USB port built into it. Some routers have USB ports built into them. You can just run it that way. Um, what I do at home between my Mac and my PC is I just turn file sharing on on my Mac and I can get to the files through my PC or through the Mac that way. Would it be easier for the DroboShare? Yes. The DroboShare gives you a couple of other options as well. Um, in a cross-platform environment, there's no software that has to be installed on any machines. Anyone on the network can see the Drobo. The other thing is you can daisy chain up to two Drobos on the network through the DroboShare.